And it could be that this form of radiation is vastly more damaging to human health. We don't know. It is totally an uh, un, uh, unknown risk. The uh, FCC says that 600 microwatts per square centimeter is an allowable continuous radiation. 600 microwatts per square centimeter. That is this line on this curve. As we can see, this is vastly in excess of the measured dose level at a at a at a 18 fold increase in childhood leukemia. This study was this level has been based on uh, studies done in the mid 1980s. We are much smarter now, and and this study was published in 2002, I believe, 2002, which means the PG&E had every opportunity to be aware of this study before. They configured their system. They could have put high gain antennas on and dropped this by a factor of a thousand, and they did not. They could have done uh, uh, um, uh, transmission of signals uh, on the power wiring. They could have done uh, uh, optical wiring, and they have done none of that. They have taken uh, a, a technology path that exposes us to, according to this study, significant risk. Here is a <clears throat> typical smart meter that's uh, installed uh, on a wall. And this is a graph that was measured on the pillow of a person who was sleeping on this side. The pillow. This means that person is exposed to radiation uh, eight hours every night when they are sleeping. And we measured 0.05 microwatts per square centimeter, well above the safety level. Uh, in Italy, their smart grid is powered by a system that uses no radiation. It is technologically possible. If you talk to PG&E, they say, no, it is not possible. As George alluded to early on, uh, when I found out about the smart meter, I got a message in the mail that said we're about to put one of those babies in, and I pretty much jumped out of my skin. I did some minor research, and I knew right off the bat these things were trouble on a stick. I called to opt out, and they said, you're in a lot of hurt. We're not opting anybody out. And so I started sending emails to my mayor, and I said, we need to have a town council meeting. I want to bring this up. And we agreed that I would give a 15-minute presentation that's a condensed version of this that gives them some of these findings. I'm a registered PE in the state of California. Uh, you know, I have the ability to talk about this subject. Uh, when the meeting came up, PG&E was on the podium for 45 minutes giving their spin, and uh, I was denied the ability to present this information to them. So what you're seeing is suppressed information. Uh, two days before that meeting, PG&E, well, what I, unbeknownst to me, the mayor was forwarding all of my emails to her, to PG&E. PG&E requested my presence at a meeting. They gave me the spin. I said, you're way above these leukemia levels. Their spin was, that's only one study. We use the FCC. They look at all studies. We use the, uh, the standards from the UN. They look at all studies. And they, as we'll hear from Mary Beth later on, there is significant uh, insincerity in how the, the uh, industry uses this. Uh, just Recently, the Los Angeles Unified School District said that 1994 law that gives the local governments no control over cell phone towers, they want that repealed. They see this impacting the health of their children. The European Parliament has recently voted uh, in favor of being more, pre uh, more precautions to human health than is currently being done. France has banned cell phones in primary schools. They can only text. And <clears throat> the federal government has... Uh, has officially acknowledged that electronic hypersensitivity is a disability. That means the municipalities are on the hook to uh, ameliorate effects of uh, uh, affected people. This, I believe, is the whole reason PG&E came to see me, the privacy issue. Here we have a smart meter that is monitoring the power going to your house, and here are some activities that might be occurring in the house. And what I've shown here is a $3.24 DSP chip. DSP stands for Digital Signal Processing. This is something that I learned at MIT. And for the better part of nine years, I worked for Ingersoll Rand, and I designed f digital signal filtering for uh, industrial control systems. And what I mean by that is when you are putting power to a motor in a, an industrial process, by looking at the frequency characteristics of that motor, you can determine the health of the process. It's a great way to not have to put a probe inside of the process. All you have to do is watch the, the motor and infer what the process is doing. If I have a $3 chip inside of this, I can do a wealth of interesting things. For example, when you turn on a hair dryer, that's a series wound motor that ha has an 1800 watt uh, heater attached to it. 
the signal for that is totally easy to spot. Uh, if I were to look at that in the, in the Fourier transform domain, I could infer that at 5 o'clock in the morning or so, you turned on a dryer for 10 minutes, 8 minutes, 4 minutes, some number. Uh, when you turn on the fan in your bathroom, that is a fractional horsepower uh, induction motor with a, a uh, shaded pole start. Okay, Again, fairly easy to spot. And I can, the smart meter could therefore say, gee, at about 6.02 in the morning or, or 3 in the morning or whenever, uh, you turned on the, the, the fan in your bathroom. Or here's a woman enjoying a vibrator. That is a DC motor with a variable speed drive and pro possibly a switching power supply. Okay? This is easily discernible okay, from these other appliances. This woman turned it on for 20 minutes at 9 p.m. at night. Okay? This meter is fully capable of keeping all of this information in its memory. PG&E hasn't told us whether they're doing this or not, but what they have told us is the software inside of a smart meter is proprietary. That means we don't get to know. Thank you so much. I doubt if that was that's a coincidence. A.C. Nielsen collaborated with MIT in 1992, and they said, barcodes are great. That tells us what you buy. Uh, customer cards are great. They tell us who bought the stuff. But what they also said was, what is missing in our marketing strategy is when, where, and how usage. And they were presenting this to MIT saying, this is a problem. We do not know when, where, and how our products are being bought, how they're being used. Uh, if the smart meter supplies this information, I assert that this has an extraordinary amount of marketing value. This isn't a trivial bit of information that we can discount. There are people with a lot of money who want to know this. And PG&E is asserting, well, we're not doing it. But by the way, all the stuff that goes on inside of the meter is top secret. Here is, and if you think that's bad, they're just getting warmed up. Here is uh, graphics from the industry itself talking about this link inside of the house. Smart meters uh, talk directly to smart-enabled devices. It's like a Bluetooth, okay? And P, the, the CPUC has already committed to mandating that all appliances sold in California are smart-enabled, which means they will intelligently talk to your smart meter over what is something like a Bluetooth link. So that means when you're in the, uh, here they are enjoying their smart meter in the entertainment room, it will be telling us uh, devices that are on, what they're doing. Uh, here's uh, mom and daughter in the kitchen. Here they are preparing a healthy snack. And uh, here we have, our, they're enjoying their smart meter in the bedroom. This is right out of their literature. Bold face. They're telling us this is the information that this meter will be privy to, far more detailed information than it is inferring from its own digital signal processing capabilities. We do not have a block diagram of that meter. We don't have the software that's used. And they are uh, only alluding to the data that is being collected. Uh, in the meeting that I had with him, they described the data that they were collecting, but they did not allude to the fact that because this is a digital, digital signal processing device, it can infer a great deal more. Uh, <clears throat> uh, in addition to that data stream, which is currently uncontrolled, they're not talking about it, uh, there's no uh, law against them taking it uh, based on how they're uh, qualifying these devices legally. And uh, in addition to that gaping hole in security, uh, UC Berkeley professors agree that the security they're using just on the, on the devices as they're uh, currently uh, described by PG&E, the security is insufficient, which means the data that they're collecting is like easy to hack and easy to broadcast to the rest of the world. The Fourth Amendment to the Constitution says, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, and papers shall not be abridged. This thing is directly looking at the interior of your house if it collects this sort of information. This I have not given permission to PG&E to do, as no one in this room has, because they have not even asked for that permission. They are assuming that this meter is identical to the meter that they currently have a um, utility easement for. Okay? But the current meter... It sits on the side of the house, and I could care less if somebody walks up and looks at the numbers. Go ahead. Look at my neighbors. Have a, have a blast. But I do not want this thing giving uh, a diary of the ac internal activities in my home to the highest bidder. I'm uh, in a court suit with my health insurance provider saying, 
listen here, you were supposed to cover my kidney disease. What's wrong? They stand in court and say, Your Honor, look at this uh, information showing that this person was up in the middle of the night for months and months before uh, they ever contracted with us for health insurance. They didn't disclose this to us. They're being ingenuine. And you can imagine the ramifications of this if this is being sold to the highest bidder. The CPUC's charter indicates that they are dedicated to having safe and reliable equipment. I doubt if that is supported by how this, uh, you know, by the preceding. Uh, turn, the Utility Reform Network agrees when they are uh, basically providing a contrary opinion to the uh, release of the smart meter equipment. I'm not doing too bad. <clears throat> they said that uh, PG&E's business case for the analysis is overly optimistic. Like, you're going to get 40 bucks a year, and you're going to do much for that? Uh, you know, that's basically dinner in a movie. Um, uh, the demand response forecast is overly optimistic. They say meter reading could be accomplished with a less comprehensive system. Enough said. The action plan, I don't have one. Uh, clearly, health is a problem. Clearly, privacy is a problem. But health is governed by two uh, federal acts that are fairly onerous. Uh, uh, tobacco was legal for decades before uh, we finally started uh, turning the tide, uh, reducing how much advertising they could do, requiring packaging labeling. We are in the same situation with uh, electromagnetic sensitivity, that it's going to be a good 20 years before the data is in before it's published in peer-reviewed journals. We've already got data that says there are health impacts, but uh, the level of proof that's required uh, by federal agencies, that's going to take longer to develop. So we're in a case of buyer beware. <laughs>